Hello friends and welcome to Global Defense. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the capabilities of the Chinese Navy and how it stands against the US fleet. So China currently possesses the largest navy in the world, but if a conflict were to arise, the US fleet would still hold the advantage for now. Back in 2005, China Chinese Navy was not a cause for concern for the Americans. Its submarines fleet consisted mainly of outdated diesel-powered vessels, posing little threat to the United States. With only one nuclear missile submarine, China lacked a continuous at-sea deterrent. Additionally, China had no aircraft carriers or cruiser at that time. Now after that we had seen significant changes that occurred today the people liberation army known as plan boast six new nuclear powered submarines armed with nuclear weapons at least one of these submarines is always deployed concealed and elusive ready to launch its 12 ballistic missiles each capable of carrying three nuclear warheads capable of devastating a city the People's Liberation Army Navy also possesses nine formidable nuclear-powered attack submarines as well. So China has introduced entirely new classes of warships into its naval forces. It now operates two operational aircraft carriers, although they are not conventional carriers and lack catapult system. They use ski jump ramps for jet launches. Consequently, Chinese carrier-based aircraft have limited payload capabilities and capacities similar to British carriers. Last year, China launched its third carrier, the Fujian, which is currently undergoing outfitting with full load displacement of 80,000 tons. The Fujian surpasses British Queen Elizabeth class carrier and approaches the size of Americans 100,000 ton super carriers. It is expected to carry 40 combat jets along with radar planes. Notably, the Fujian features catapult system enabling the deployment of fully capable and powerful aircrafts. A fourth carrier reportedly nuclear powered like US carriers is expected soon as well allowing it to carry more aircrafts and operate without refueling. So the People Liberation Army Navy has also added sixth cruiser to its fleet known as the Renai class. While some classify these ships are large destroyers they displace 12,000 ton more than the US Navy's Ticonderoga class cruisers and carry a similar array of weapon. China also possesses over 80 regular sized destroyers and frigates as well as 50 light corvettes. While the classification of these light ships as true warships may be debatable, they carry armaments comparable to Britain Type 31 frigates designed for cost efficiency. So, according to recent reports from the US Cong Congress Research Service, the plan currently operates 351 battle force ships, making it the largest navy globally, while the US Navy has 294 ships. However, this comparison must be understood in the context of apples and oranges as the report emphasized the United States Navy maintains a significant lead in other metrics. The total tonnage of US warships is more than twice that of Chinese fleet. This means that the US fleet has greater endurance and is better equipped to handle challenging open oceans conditions as a true blue water navy force in the world or the US navy carriers are more powerful and it carries a large arsenal with over 90,000 vertical missile launch cells on its surface warships compared to Chinese 1,000. Moreover, the US Navy vessels are technologically more advanced while Chinese does possess a comparable number of submarines. Only 15 of them are nuclear powered with the rest being diesel submarines. First rate Navy typically do not rely on diesel submarines due to their limited range and speed when operating submerged. During World War II, Hitler's diesel U-boats had to surface for attacks on Allied convoys and only submerged at the last moment to avoid the detection. With the advancement in radar and aircrafts in the Battle of the Atlantic, running on the surface become highly risky and most U-boats did not return home. Argentina diesel submarines deployed against the Royal Navy during the Falkland War managed to return mostly came home but only because they never got anywhere near the British task forces. 
when we talk about uh, the year 2040 on current trends the people liberation army navy will have an even bigger margin of superiority by count of battle force ships and at some point quantity will start to take on the quality of its own chinese air and space powers might by then have grown to the point of being able to locate us carriers anti ship ballistic missiles of the future will probably have sophisticated hypersonic boost glider warheads able to maneuver unpredictably as they plunge down on american's warship even the best interceptors would probably struggle to stop such technologies in the future we will see more powerful chinese army not only having a large number of submarines aircraft carriers and frigates but also they will be equipped with the latest state of the art technologies and the radar systems so friends this was about today's podcast i hope you like today's podcast to inform us about your valuable opinion in the comment box and thank you for listening